There's an impressive statistic Michelle Bridges uses in her campaign to make us healthier. She says those who followed her advice have lost more than one and a half million kilograms of fat. That's equivalent to the total weight of 20,000 Australian adults. Not bad, huh? So why then is the personal trainer made famous by TV's The Biggest Loser so controversial? Maybe it's because no one likes being told the truth about obesity and the fact it's killing us. Or maybe it's because there's resentment Michelle Bridges has so successfully parlayed bad news into enormous profits. For all the people who think Michelle Bridges is a marvel, there are just as many quick to dismiss her as a show-off. But whatever the view, there's no question about her drive and her determination to put health and fitness on the national agenda. So who are you trying to inspire? Everyone. <laughs> Everyone deserves to have good health. Everyone deserves to feel good about themselves. But I'm not trying to say that you will only feel good about yourself if you eat well and exercise. But I am... Why aren't you saying that? Because I know that there'll be those out there saying, I'm happy, I've got a great life, and I don't need to exercise and eat well to do that. And Try as she know, might to be diplomatic, heart. Michelle Bridges knows the rates of obesity in this country are out of control. But it's a truth many Australians don't want to hear, especially from a super fit, successful 47-year-old. You, at one point a while back, said that you'd never met a morbidly obese person who was happy and the reaction was swift and pretty brutal. Oh yeah, it was. It was, it was very brutal. I was talking in the context of their health and their well-being, and yes, it, it caused uh, a real stir, as may well this interview today. But uh, is that a bad thing? Well, you know what, I don't think it is. But shaming or accusing or, or vilifying or making people feel um, unimportant or unheard or invisible is, is, not, is not my mission. It's not, it's not what you're it's about. It's not what I'm about. It never has been. People love you, but there are people who love to hate you. I, well, I, I wouldn't know. I, I, you must have thought about it. You're not always going to make friends. Not everyone's going to like you because you're trailblazing. And that, that is exactly what I am. I'm in your world now. You are. <laughs> <laughs> but don't fear. I will take good care of you, I promise. You okay? Unlike most of us who dread going to the gym, I see it drive through your legs. it's been where Michelle has always felt most at home. With an ambition to be the next Jane Fonda, a 14-year-old Bridges decided to teach her own fitness classes yes. and put fun like this back into exercise. Oh, look straight up your dress. Oh, it's all right, I've got little leggings on. I went down to the local squash courts and said, Hi, um, my name's Michelle Bridges. I'm 14. I go to the local high school, Nelson Bay High, and um, I teach fitness classes, and I'm really good. <laughs> and that <laughs> empty squash court down the end there, I can fill it with people. And I, I mean, I don't know what this guy was thinking, but he said yes. And so I, you know, poor, I had to get my leg warmers and my leotard that went on the outside of the tights up the crack. Please tell me it wasn't one of those G-string ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> what are you talking about? Of course it was that. <laughs> um, of course. So isn't that fabulous that, that you found your passion at a very young age? I was well before my time, Ali. I think as I was getting, you know, through my teenage years and into my 20s, and my mum used to always say, when are you gonna get a real job? Mm. I can't keep jumping up and down in Lycra for the rest of your life. Wanna bet, mum? <laughs> Still doing it now. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing it just today. <laughs> Move more, eat less. Michelle's big break came in 2004. Relax. When she enjoy. literally bumped into Kerry Ann Kennelly at a Sydney gym. She became CAC's resident fitness there. expert on TV. Kilos, Michelle Bridges, our health and fitness guru. Oh my God. I, I was a deer in headlights. Amazing headspace. 
face. You the next thing it. she knew, she was cast as the tough, talking personal trainer on The you Biggest really, Loser. Really want it. For Go. nine seasons, Michelle pushed contestants to record-breaking weight loss, and in doing so, became the show's biggest winner. Brand Bridges was launched, and with it came cult-like adulation and a $53 million empire. There were books and DVDs, a range of activewear, and the biggest success, and surprise of all, the 12-week body transformation program. We were all looking at each other going, oh my God, you know, like we might get, I don't know, two or three hundred people that might want to do this. And how many has it now been? Hundreds of thousands of people. Like there's not many people that you'll talk to in this country that hasn't either done it or known someone that has. Not bad for a girl from Newcastle raised by a single mum who came to Sydney with $300 in the bank. And a second-hand sports girl, Barina. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and all of my worldly belongings in the back of it. Her role on The Biggest Loser was not just professionally rewarding. So was it a surprise when you did find yourself thinking, oh, Steve's all right? Yeah. <laughs> God. <laughs> My mum's going to be watching this. <laughs> um, I guess it, well, it was lovely. It was, mm. it, was, it was beautiful. It really was. Um, and it was completely... Uh, Unexpected. That Steve is her fellow fitness coach and now partner, Steve the Commando Willis. Is Steve romantic? No. <laughs> um, yes, he is, but it's in his it's in his own way, you know. Like I. What's that mean? Well, he's very thoughtful, extremely thoughtful. We'd been away for the weekend, and we'd had all these bags and. Steve just came home, unpacked all the bags, and put oh, a I didn't unpack all and, the bags. and put a slow roast on. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, but I needed to eat that night, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was it's being not selfish. Like... <laughs> <laughs> well... wow. Finding love with Steve later in life meant Michelle had all but accepted she wouldn't have children of her own. Yet, incredibly, at 44, she conceived naturally and became mum to her and Steve's little boy, Axel, who's now 22 months old. Anyone that knows me knows the sacrifices that I've made, and this was almost going to be one of them. But when Axel came into my world, it, it took me to a whole new place. It can be overwhelming, can't it? Oh, yeah. Like, I, I, uh, there's been many a times when I'll just start talking about Axel and burst into tears, and people are like, oh, is she OK? <laughs> Steve goes, yeah, she does this all the time. <laughs> Does it go there or does it go there? But Baby Joy came with a backlash. You attributed your good fortune to falling pregnant to having led a very healthy life. I, I think it was probably a contributing factor. You know, I, I can't say that that's the only factor. Um, I think that it was fortunate, um, quite extraordinary now from what I'm told. I had no idea that it was... Uh, as unique as I'm told that it, it was, um, I just, I feel very blessed. Did it surprise you that, that some people didn't like that comment you made? In a way, yes. Uh, but then when you stop and think about it, it is like uh, weight, like fitness, like health. It's one of those topics that is a hotbed of debate. And there's emotions that are stirred and I just completely understand that. With a toddler, life in the Bridges Willis household is happy, organised chaos. Wow. wow! But outside their home, celebrity has brought an unwanted attention. Michelle and Steve are hot property for the tabloids and online trolls. Why do you think you are such fodder for headlines and the paparazzi? Well, there is that thing called the tall poppy syndrome. <laughs> is that still around? By putting yourself out there, you've, you have invited um, close scrutiny then of your personal life. Absolutely. I'm totally fine with it. And I've never had, for 10 years, I hadn't really ever had a problem. But you took a photographer to court. Yes. 
Yeah, that was, that was probably the one time that I really felt that m myself and my family were unsafe. What happened? We almost fell down a flight of stairs carrying our child yeah. um, at three months of age. And that was when I thought, this is, this is crazy. Yeah. If it hadn't been for Steve to catch me in the pram and, and, uh, and hold his balance, then that, could, that night could have ended quite dramatically. How did you feel having the judge side with the photographer and not grant the AVO? I, I had a feeling that that would probably be the outcome, um, mm. which is slightly disappointing, but every Australian deserves the right to feel safe. Seven, a little bit deeper now. Eight. The court case didn't stop Michelle continuing her very public campaign against the fat epidemic. Her latest project, a new book with endocrinologist Professor Catherine Samaras, is directly aimed at the one in three Australians who are obese. But once again, she's careful with her words. No, it's a fairly alarming statistic and uh, I, I really want to preface this that I'm not trying to offend anyone or um, belittle anyone or, you know, finger point anyone. It's not about that. I know you're always anxious about not wanting to upset anyone, but do you think maybe with this we do need to upset a few people? Well, Ali. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to get you in trouble. No, not at all. No, I, you know, um, but when we've got uh, the rate of cardiovascular disease, um, mental health issues, uh, type 2 diabetes, uh, fatty liver disease, kidney disease, and all the many cancers that come along with uh, obesity, then shouldn't we be having this conversation? Like, and I know it's emotionally charged for some, but how emotionally charged is it for your family when, you know, things are going downhill? That's pretty emotional too. Albeit slightly censored and more cautious these days, Michelle Bridges is still very much on the same mission she started as a schoolgirl. And whether it's the message or the messenger that people don't like, she's adamant it comes from the right place. I've seen people shift gear and take their lives to a completely different place, to a place that they never thought possible. That's why I do what I do. It is more than a business to you. Yeah. God, that makes me teary just even saying that. Mm. That's what I've been doing since I was 40. That's why I love it. I can literally walk down the street uh, in one day and I can have had five to 10 people come up to me and say, you've changed my life, you've changed my mom's life, you've changed my dad's life. And for me, that is, oh, that's, um, me telling my 14-year-old self, girl, we did it.